Just listen to that sauce swirling in there. Mmm. Totally worth it. 30 minutes to make a dish that your family will never forget. You'll thank me later. Today we're gonna to be cooking chicken alfredo. This is one of my family's favorite dishes and the number one dish request we get whenever we cook on Instagram. Been really excited to do this for a long time. I love the way that the crispy chicken pairs with the creamy alfredo sauce and like a little match made in cheesy heaven. I love that you can make it for two people, you can make it for a big group just as easily, and I hope that your family enjoys this just as much as we do. So I'm gonna start with my chicken breast. I'm gonna get, get that prepared here. I've got some boneless, skinless breast that I took the fatter pieces and kind of cut them in half to make this easier. If you'll notice on a chicken breast, the top part is a lot thicker than the bottom part, so we're gonna pound them out even. Put them in a Ziploc bag here. Flatten it out. And I use a little mallet. I'm just gonna pound it down to about a half inch to three quarters of an inch so that this top part is even with the bottom part. When you're pounding it, you wanna kinda of pull away with the chicken. Don't just hit straight down because you will break it and it will not be good for frying. So I'm just gonna do a traditional three station chicken. We're gonna start the first one with our flour and salt and pepper. It's real simple. Half a cup of flour. I like to add a little cornstarch. Gives you that golden brown look at your chicken. Salt, about a quarter teaspoon of each, maybe a half a teaspoon of your salt. I'm gonna whisk that up a little bit. Before you cook your, put your chicken in your batter, taste your stuff. This is what you're gonna be eating, so if it doesn't taste right, you can kind of check right here before you get it cooked and see whether or not it's missing something. A little better. So my flour and salt, I'm gonna have my eggs over here. Whisk it up real good. This last one, we're gonna do our panko. Put about a cup of panko in here. Then I'm gonna do about a half a cup of parm. Put that in there real good. This is what's gonna give you that awesome crunch on the outside. Then I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Lots of extra audio there for you. No good dish goes unsalted. Don't put too much salt because your Parmesan's already gonna have a little salty flavor to itself. First step before you dredge your chicken, you want to pat it dry on both sides. That's gonna make the flour stick to it. Flour is really fine. It's going to adhere to the chicken. Put a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Shake that off. As you can see, it's fully floured. Not a lot of seasoning there yet. Get in our egg wash. And this is really going to stick to that flour. It's going to make it really soft and tender in there. Go to here. This is our shaggy. A little shaggy breading. Coat it really good in this stuff. If I hold this up for you, see all that texture, and when it's fried, it's gonna be amazing. Got that Parmesan cheese in there. Set it over here to the plate. I'm using fresh pasta, so I'm not gonna start my water boiling yet, but if you're using store-bought pasta, which is the quickest way to make this, then you wanna start your water boiling now. Go ahead and get that salt and boiling. Then I'm gonna start grating my Parmesan and prepping my uh, herbs. Americanized Alfredo um, is going to use a lot of cheese. That's what this is based around. It's also going to use cream and butter. And then I add garlic and what other, uh, whatever other herbs I feel in the mood for at the time. All you're really going to need to make the sauce though is the Parmesan, butter, and the cream. 
go by the weight of this or go by the package measurements, just two eight ounce or you want to use about 12 ounces in weight, so two blocks is pretty good. I grew up in a big family. Um, I'm the oldest of 19 kids and so of course I got to pull my share of weight around the house when it came to cooking, although I didn't cook anything like this. Um, after I was married, um, I went into law enforcement and really got into cooking then. I'd come home from work and cook with my wife, cook with the kids, and it kind of became like a de-stressor, something I look forward to when I get home to put work aside and then get into spending time with the family. Got to where I really enjoyed it. I'm no longer in law enforcement, but I still enjoy cooking, and it's my favorite hobby. I'm not a professional chef, but I am a home cook that really enjoys it. I think most of you must enjoy cooking too, or at least watching somebody else cook. I love food, and this is the best way to get it. Get down here to the end, you'll notice the cheese gets darker, and you can feel it get a little harder on your grater. Save this. Don't throw it away. This is the palm rind. They are amazing. Whether you're putting it in soups, um, saving it for, I actually put this in my pot roast, and everybody digs for the little chunks of um, beef flavored Parmesan at the end of it. But anything you're using, this is amazing for seasoning it with, and you don't want to waste one of the best parts of one of the best cheeses out there. So I looked around the refrigerator and I have some thyme and basil, some dried oregano, that's what I'm going to use in my sauce today. The real Italians would not do this, they use cheese and pasta water and butter. Give me some basil leaves and uh, I've already done this before but you want to really make your um, aromatics stand out in your dishes. Squeeze them real good beforehand, crush them up, that's going to start releasing those oils. Fresh basil is very strong, it don't take much. There's about five cloves of garlic. If you want to add more and you love garlic, feel free to do it. This stuff is strong, but it is the most iconic part for me if I go to an Italian restaurant in America is the most iconic part of Italian food. I've never been to Italy, so I don't know if they do or not, but we do it here. It's easier to peel them if I just smash them on my hand first, and then that peeling just seems to come right off a lot easier. I prefer taking the time to use fresh garlic, but if you have that mint stuff, and you just want to put a couple tablespoons in your sauce, two and a half tablespoons or so, it's going to, it's going to taste really good. Very few people would ever tell the difference, but for me, I just love the novelty and I feel like it gives me a better taste of just using the fresh garlic. We've got all our fresh seasonings cut up and we're going to go over here and put them in a sauce. So I'm going to use some olive oil in the bottom of this guy. I'm going to use a lot of olive oil. We'll heat that up until the oil kind of starts to shimmer and you can look it's a little harder in cast iron but you'll kind of see a little movement if you got a reflection in the oil or something, see that little shimmery movement. That's when your oils kind of hit that temperature. It's gonna be right short of smoke. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna leave that chicken in there about three minutes, let it start to brown, somewhere three to four minutes. Once it starts to brown, we're gonna pop it out, flip it over, three to four minutes on the other side, check the temp, we're gonna hit 165. That chicken's good to go. We'll flip that over. Feel that little crust? Yeah. It'll be perfection. We'll go ahead and pull that off right at 165. That's what we're looking for. So our chicken's done. We're gonna go ahead and get started on our sauce. So I start with a cold pan and I'm gonna turn it, turn my burner on to heat my butter. Got it down on really low heat. As soon as my butter starts to melt, I'm gonna throw in my garlic. I'm not gonna spare it on the garlic. The reason I'm putting the garlic on cold instead of waiting for it to get hot is Instead of getting that roasted garlic flavor, I'm gonna let this garlic sweat into this butter and it's gonna give it a lot stronger garlic flavor. Now that my butter is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and add my cream, salt, and pepper. 
As soon as it starts to bubble like this, you wanna go ahead and add the cream. If not, you're gonna start roasting all that garlic. Now, if you're looking for a roasted garlic flavor, go ahead and brown that butter, roast that garlic, and that'll be its own thing, but that's not what we're going for today. Got half a teaspoon of salt. There's something about fresh cracked black pepper. So I'm gonna get ready to drop in my noodles. I'm gonna salt my pasta water and then drop them in because my sauce is almost ready. So we've made our own pasta. Um, I make homemade pasta and I love it. But if you're using store-bought, yours should almost be ready. This cooks a lot faster, so I'm gonna drop it in now. We're gonna go ahead, now that our sauce is pretty close to simmer none, we're gonna sprinkle in our thyme and our fresh basil. I love to use fresh when I can. If you're using dried, just use a little less because dried is a lot stronger. I don't have any oregano plants right now. So I'm gonna be using the dried oregano. I generally just pull my noodles straight out of the water and into another pot. If you do strain them, you're gonna to wanna to grab about a half a cup or a cup of that pasta water. I'll show you why later. So I turn my heat completely off when I go to add the cheese. You can turn it all the way down. Just if you have your sauce too hot and you keep stirring that cheese, it's gonna separate from your sauce and you're gonna be back over at the start. Add about one handful at a time. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over top, what you see here. And then stir it in. This is why shredding that Parmesan so fine really helps. It absorbs a lot quicker. If you tried to put the big shreds of Parmesan in here, it'd take a lot longer to mix it in. You can already see that sauce really starting to thicken. Wow, oh, just look at that cheesy goodness right there. We got a really good thick cheesy sauce. I'm gonna start adding the noodles in. Before I get all the noodles in, I'm gonna get about a half a cup of this sauce and set it in reserve for plating because these noodles will start to absorb this sauce and they will eat it all up. Here's our Alfredo, we're ready to cut up our chicken and plate it. You can hear it just crunching through. Let's get a big old plate of this stuff. Pick up some of this chicken that we cut. Here we go. There's chicken on here. A little bit of basil. And we'll pour a little of this sauce I saved out. Just gonna run that down the side. It's gonna really offset that chicken there. And here we go. And there you have it, a simple dinner, 30 minutes, whether you're cooking for two people or for a whole crowd, and it really looks amazing. And I can't wait to take a bite of that. Just listen to that sauce, swirl it in there. Mmm. Totally worth it. 30 minutes to make a dish that your family will never forget. You'll thank me later.